So last week we recorded um, and only about a third of the video had sound. Uh, <laughs> I think it was I think it was due to our uh, our microphone setup and I couldn't see the little bar the that suddenly stopped moving when I stopped uh, when I kept kept talking. So this week hopefully that'll be better. Um, I, I'm planning to re-record um, last week's session just in my office or something and uh, um, I'll have that posted. Um, Sister Jeans uh, will be posted as well. Um, I just haven't had a chance this week to even edit it um, uh, for her, but you know we'll get that uh, we'll get that up hopefully this weekend. Uh, so hopefully both sessions of both classes will be up. And Brother Tim is going to record his separately because his environment is so noisy that it's hard to uh, to record where he's at right now doing his uh, his session. Um, okay, so last week. We kind of laid out what we're going to be talking about these four weeks. Um, and so last week we kind of talked a little bit about, um, you know, I, I, played, I played kind of a trick on everybody. You know, Faith, Faith was, was here for that one. I, I, made the, I gave them all this, I expounded all this uh, information about this great technology that is transforming the way that we communicate and so forth and everything else. Um, and of course, you know, we're in this class, so we're going to be thinking it's social media. But I was actually talking about the Gutenberg Press 500 years ago. But everything that I said about it, which you know I find really remarkable, you know how it transformed the world. It, it changed the way religion worked. It changed the way people have a relationship with God through His Word. Um, it changed how quickly information can move. It changed how expensive it was to store information. All of that, inf all of that stuff applies right now today too with this shift that we're going through again. Um, I, there's a, a, a guy that I follow on YouTube talking about church communications and such. And he, one of his taglines is that this is the biggest communication, we're in the middle of the biggest communication shift in 500 years. And we are, you know, because, you know, we've got, you know, we, we lost our, our young whippersnappers tonight, but uh, um, but I'm thinking back to like my mom and, you know, the things that she saw in her life. And I, I, I can, you know, part of part of what I've got to talk about tonight is, you know, I remember when there was no Internet. You know, I think all of us, maybe, maybe Rissa, maybe. I do remember when we had the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> I remember not having it, but it, it, whether it existed or not. But I remember, you know, it wasn't even a concept. I remember there were no computers, really. The, the, the first computers that came along were, you know, like, fascinating to me, you know. But my mom remembers when there were no cars, you know, or, or she, if she were still alive with us. You know, she was born in 1920, and she, you know, grew up. Actually, I think her baby pictures, they had a car, but it was new, you know. Cars were Easter, just, Easter yeah, just a new thing at that time in the early, in the mid-1920s. Um, but even that change, even that change from, you know, horse and buggy to, you know, motorized travel um, and then later to flying across the world in an airplane, that didn't do for information and knowledge and communications anything close to what we're going through right now with social media. It's kind of a, you know, it, it's, it's a big thing. And since we're right in the middle of it and we're kind of just riding along with the wave, Sometimes we don't think about that, you know, what a big change this is from, you know, like when I was in high school, right? You know, um, so that was that was a big part of what we talked about last last week was the the history and everything. And like I mentioned and uh, have already apologized for it today, to, uh, tonight week two is, is kind of the boring one probably. I, I've tried to make it, you know, I've tried to make all of these maybe not as as you know one note as as they might be, but uh, you know. We're going to talk a little bit about a little bit about how they work, you know, how the algorithms work, you know, why you see some posts and not see others and stuff like that. I promise I'm not going to get real deep on it. Um, and then just to recap for for uh, the schedule for next week, next week is, is where we're really going to start to get into the meat, hopefully. And that's you know, I title it, you know, like what would Jesus post, you know, what, <laughs> you know, back uh, what was it, high school, I guess, you know, going back to high school again, the, the what would Jesus do bracelets came out and all that stuff. But, you know, what would he post? You know, how would Jesus use social media? And I think, you know, we, we have indications in the Bible of how he taught, how he communicated with people, of what he might do in, in our situation with this technology. Um, 
And then I want to go on and, and kind of adapt the great commission that we've all been given to social media and, and what we can do from there. And peppered through all of this is going to be a lot of stuff that Brother Gene and I have been talking about, directions for the church, um, that we're going to be going as a corporate body. But uh, a big thing that we talked about last week, uh, you know, a big telling point was we've kind of come to this place where we think of the church as a place we go. And maybe not so much us, but in general, you know, pe church going people generally think of church as a place that I go. Um, instead of a thing that I'm part of or, or a part of my identity. And that's kind of what we want to try to shift everything to. This whole thing with social media um, really is a tool that we can use to do that. That, you know, just like, you know, you talk to people about, about God in, you know, Walmart or whatever. How do we use this tool in, in ways that can also promote God's word um, and, and, you know, bring people into his kingdom? Um, so stuff from last week that kind of matters for this, this trends and, and algorithm stuff uh, that we're talking about tonight. One of the big things is social media and, you know, I mean, even search engines, right? They know who you are. They know the things you're interested in. There's huge amounts of money poured into advertising on search engines, right? And on Facebook. You know, why, you know what, what's the return that people are getting on that money? Well, they're getting returns because ads come up in front of people's face. And, you know, a, a hundred thousand views of that ad, you might get a couple thousand sales or whatever, right? Uh, or, you know, uh, most, most ads are paid uh, based on click-through rate, you know. Um, you know, certain, certain websites, certain, you know, real estate is more valuable in the ad world because it has a higher click-through rate. More, 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 you know, impressions is another thing that they talk about where it's like every time somebody sees it, that's an impression. Um, every time somebody clicks on it, that's a click-through. But huge amount, anyway, huge amounts of money, social, so, and it adapts to us. There are these algorithms that all these things have um, that adapt to who we are. So I'm gonna see different ads than Sister Pate will, than, than Sister Julie will. Um, and it's saturated with content. There is no end. Uh, I, I used to work with another developer uh, before I, when joined my current company. Um, and he was basically on call. We, we had started outsourcing to India. And he was on call to basically, just basically work with them remotely, uh, you know, over the phone, you know, back when we used phones for this kind of thing. Um, and uh, just solve their problems and stuff. As a result, you know, he had a lot of free time on his hands, kind of in between, you know, their sessions or whatever. And I remember him saying one day, and this was like, what was this? Maybe 2003, 2004, you know, and, and Steve came and, and he was like, you know, sat in my office and just bored look on his face, right? Looked like a zombie. And he said, dude, I have reached the end of the internet, you know? <laughs> Cause I guess, you know, he just spent all this time browsing. Not something you can remotely do anymore. You know, yeah. there, you know on, on social media, you know, you, you scroll through Facebook, you know, when do you, when, do you, when do you reach the end of your scrolling on Facebook? Oh, my yeah, you're, you're going to give out before that content gives out. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and social media, just like everything else, is changing faster than we can keep up with it. Um, so those things painted together, you know, or put together paint a pretty bleak picture for us, don't they? You know, how are we going to get people to notice what we want to say to them? Yeah. So I don't have a solid answer for that. <laughs> um, I have some clues and some, some ideas and things that will get us maybe towards the, you know, that goal. 
Um, and then we've got some practices, some changes we're going to be making in how we do social as uh, the church page itself um, that will hopefully kind of address some of these things. So I also had a, a great quote last week uh, that may have been from Mark Twain or may not, but um, it's like all my target audience for all these little snippets of, of, of in my presentation aren't here tonight, but oh well. So what, I've actually got two quotes tonight. This one is life moves pretty fast. And bonus points for anybody who can finish the quote. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's oh. just kind of... <laughs> yeah, I, I thought maybe Rob might stand a chance if he, if he was here, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Um, so change is something that we're kind of accustomed to, right? And it's just always with us. Um, and one of the questions last week that came up was, I, I mentioned Web 3.0. Um, and Sister Brittany asked, you know, what is Web 3.0? And I kind of did a bad job of explaining it. But so I wanted to kind of touch on that a little bit tonight. Also, in context of what has gone before. So, you know, back in the 90s, this Web 1.0 world, you know, you had a web, you had a web page. Companies had web pages. They published web pages. So most of the content was published content. And that one little blue person there out of, you know, you know, maybe 10% of, of these 100,000 websites were content generated by people, by, by humans, just, you know, vanity websites or websites that they, you know, this is before social media completely. Um, the web 2.0 world, you know, you know, circa you know maybe 2000 2010 I'm not sure exactly where that I'm not sure exactly where that boundary line falls but you know we're in this world we're actually like right around here right now um, you know we're talking we've gone from 100,000 websites to 100 million websites um, and the amount of individuals having access to this kind of publication this kind of dispersal of, you know, of information has grown quite a bit, you know, maybe about 25% of the content that's out there is by people like you and me, right? Not companies. Um, and it, it, you know, has also kind of in the later span of this, you know, we've, social media comes into the mix and just blows everything out of proportion. Um, so we're on the, the verge of moving into Web 3.0. And, and the, the way that I described it last week was that Web 3.0 is what a lot of people are calling the data-driven internet, um, which is a weird thing to say because, you know, we've gone from, you know, 50, 50 million users to, you know, a billion users to two and a half billion users in the, in the next generation. But 60% or so of that is generated by people. Facebook posts, TikTok videos, uh, web pages, you know, that they that they want, you know, to, to, to publish or put out. Um, but the reason, you know, I, I'm a software developer, and, and the reason people like me talk about it in terms of a data-driven internet is this right here, is this artificial intelligence, machine learning. Because, you know, we talked about things being saturated with content, but you know, everything's saturated with content. That amount of content, how am I going to find my friend from high school? Right? Um, how am I going to find, you know, how am I going to find, uh, you know, a guitar amp that I want to buy? How, you know, how, you know, I mean, you got search engines and everything else. Well, they have to have algorithms to be able to learn to help you find these things. And so the data and the way that that data is crunched becomes critical in terms of being able to find information, to be able to, you know, actually get anything useful out of all of this stuff. Um, another quote says, interesting things happen along the borders or transitions, not in the middle where everything is the same. And that's from a book by Neil Stevenson called Snow Crash in the early 90s. Um, one of my favorite books, even though the ending was just dumb. Um, but he was, in this book, he kind of foresaw and kind of created a lot of things you know, just like Jules Verne created, created a lot of things and, you know, that have come to pass. Uh, a lot of things in Star Trek, you know, from the 
the the 60s have come to pass. You know, we've got, I've got, uh, it's in it's in my coat, but I've got a, a little device with a little screen that I can pull up medical data on, right? You know, all this. So Neil Stevenson envisioned this world and, and created this world where everything is in uh, a digital world and people would put on goggles and immerse themselves in that world and totally divorce themselves from the real world and all of this virtual real estate cost money and you know all, so basically today right um, but he talked about you know uh, things happening around transitions um, and now, now we're gonna get to the embarrassing part but um, so what he's talking about is right here the shifts right you know we talked about I talked about uh, this being the biggest shift that we're in for 500 years um, and we've got the shift from web 1.0 to 3 to 2.0 to now we're on the verge of shifting again um, And so I want to take a look at the last transition. Um, and I might just skip this part. <laughs> yeah, Lorena will recognize immediately what I'm talking about. Um, so anybody ever hear of the Wayback Machine? Yeah. What, what's the Wayback Machine? It's the cartoon. Yeah, from, from uh, Dog yeah, Mr. Peabody. Mr. Peabody. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's also a website called the Wayback Machine. And the Wayback Machine archives websites. So you can go all the way back to, in this case, July 1997, and find the magazine from or a, a website from this magazine called The Net. And The Net was, you know, it was a magazine that I would pick up because I was all all into this whole new internet thing, right? It was, it was really cool. Um, and uh, so I, I went and picked up the magazine one time, and they have this website. And uh, they would publish every year this feature called the 100 Best, the, the Net Magazine Site of the Year Awards. The best, the best websites on the internet, right? It, it, as far as their, their judging. Um, and like I said, this, I'll just, Go ahead. I'll, just I'll, just, I'll just do it. So if you, you know. 97, we actually lived here during the. We did, yeah, yeah, actually yeah. I was, yeah. So I go to Walmart in here in Salem, and I yeah. pick up the latest copy of the March issue of uh, you know March 1997, um, and I'm scrolling you know I'm looking scrolling through yeah I'm looking <laughs> through the pages of this magazine, um, and uh, so they're in the they have, have it all broken into different sections like gaming and shopping and sports, and they have something they call vanity sites. So I'm looking at the vanity sites. Vanity sites are just sites by people, right? You know, but they're you know ones that this website, uh, this magazine, you know, felt were memorable. Um, and uh, oops, I think I must have. I did something wrong. There we go. Um, and I ran across my website. So. And it's really cool because my website is archived in the Wayback Machine wow. from 1997. Look at that. So, so go, so go me. So that's, that's my little, uh, that's my little transition. What was your website? Huh? What was your website? It was just, it was just dumb stuff <laughs> that I, you know, just little stories that I would tell. But you know, yeah. here's a, uh, here's you know my 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 journal. You know, I talked about how when I found the magazine, uh, you know. I, you didn't get no kickbacks from that? Oh, no. I, I have a copy of the magazine, but, you know, anyway. Talked about the lady upstairs that, you know. That actually, I, I wrote this when we lived in... Uh, Cape Girardeau? Cape Girardeau, right. Yes. Yeah, so this lady would, like, wash clothes all the time. And she lived alone. Her washer never stopped running. Anyway, so, so, you know, I wrote a little bit about that. I wrote a little story about Heather's, you know, she, my, you know Heather, you know, Heather. Yeah. As she was two years old and has a conversation with a bug, and uh, you know, then kills it, Aww. which was awesome. You know? <laughs> anyway, so that's the way life used to be, and then you know, things things got 
real interesting. So now we're on this shift again, you know. So that website stuff that I used to, you know, be so fascinated by is resembles social media today about as much, you know, which is not much, about as much as social media resembles what's coming next. And the thing is, we don't really know what's coming next. You know, a big thing that we that we write is bots to handle this. You know, it's like a lot of times when you're trying to, you know, if you're on a phone call, most likely you're talking to a machine. I mean, not a, not a phone call, but if you're doing tech online chat with a website, you're talking to a machine until you get to a certain point and then they, they transfer you. You can't tell, you know? So it seems like you're talking to a person, but anyway, it's all about. You're scaring me, Ben. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was, I was, you know, our router went out at home and so I'm, I'm, I'm using my phone as a hotspot and talking to AT&T a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, this is not a person, but you know, everything they're doing, it's like, oh, oh, you know, I'm going to be dealing with you and my manager will be around, you know, shortly, you know, at, at such and such time. And that was not a machine. I mean, it was not a person. I know it wasn't, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, so all of that to say, you know, things are changing and faster than we're going to be able to keep up. So every one of the social media sites, Instagram and Facebook and, and YouTube and everybody, they've all got these algorithms on how, you know, you're scrolling, you're sitting there scrolling through your Facebook feed or your Instagram feed or is that called a feed? Anyway, <laughs> I, I already gave the disclaimer that I don't really do social media a great deal. Um, I should, but uh, nobody wants to hear from me. Um, nope. But there are ways that, what's that? Ah, I've been there, done that. So, <laughs> um, the way that the algorithm works in 2020, and this is just, again, touching on the change thing, and maybe this is just a long way of getting around to the point, to make, to make the point that uh, I really don't have a good handle on this stuff, but you know, because it changes so quickly, it, it was an, a fair amount of work to find this stuff out because um, they don't want you to know what the algorithm is, right? Um, we had a, around the time that you know, I mentioned my friend uh, that reached the end of the internet, we, I worked for PPG in Pittsburgh and we had, we actually leased a Google, what's called a Google appliance that they, they used to have. I don't know if they still have them or not. Uh, but this was in, uh, you know, 2000, 2001 timeframe. I think $125,000 a year for this computer that they would come and install it in your network. They'd be there to, to hook it up and you couldn't open it. You couldn't hardly look, you know, look at anything in it, but it gathered all the information from your internal websites and all this stuff and then built a search engine so the only the only your only interface with the thing was once you set up the settings was to go to the search page and you could search inside your company 125 grand a year 20 years ago um, but the thing that kind of the, the thing that kind of struck me the most about that was it was a sealed box and if you cracked the seal on that box they would one, I guess they would probably know, and because I mean that's that's pretty straightforward. But two, I can't imagine the financial you know burden that you would incur just by you know the fact that you you lease it, you signed papers, and now I've opened this thing because they don't want you to know what the algorithm is. Um, but anyway, getting back to Facebook, same kind of thing. But people have figured out bits and pieces of that. So right now, obviously the. You know, there, there's been a big shift where everything used to be chronological and now it's not. Um, everything is based on other things other than, you know, how recently somebody posted. Um, the downsides of the current algorithm, you know, from 2020 and upwards, is something called organic reach is down to about 5%, which means that the ability of somebody who doesn't know me or doesn't follow me to see something that I put out there you might have a 5% chance of that happening. Um, similarly, the engagement rate, the rate of somebody responding or, you know, starting, you know, uh, responding to that content, liking it, uh, st 
engaging in a conversation about it with you or with somebody else is a quarter of a percent. So, you know, again, I mean, I'm kind of painting this bad picture of, you know, man, this is really not an easy thing to do. And so we end up with a situation, have you ever asked, you know, have asked somebody, you know, if they saw your post, you know, they may never have had the chance to see it because of this algorithm. Um, and Facebook has gone through a few different, a few big changes that impacted the church a lot. Uh, 2018 was the one that was probably the most recent big one. Um, and it, it stopped featuring a lot of other factors that people had, churches had come to kind of rely on as far as getting their posts out there and changed it to where engagement is the, is the big part of it. You know, so like how much people are communicating, you know, how much conversation that per, that post spurs. If something spurs a lot of, con you know, starts a lot of conversation, people going back and forth, commenting and stuff, that post is gonna be seen by more people. It just, it gets favored. So it's like, kind of like survival of the fittest, you know, the, only the strong survive kind of thing, mm -hmm. which makes it really hard for like a small church, right? Um, so the, the factors that go into the algorithm that kind of feed that situation up above, um, the big ones since 2018, and they refined it some uh, to the point where the article that I was reading here on 2020 um, identified the main factors as relationship, which is how consistently your audience engages with you. So like if our church uh, and again, I'm, I'm probably talking a little bit ahead of stuff for next week and, and the following week, but you know, if our church puts a post out there and a lot of people inside our church comment on it and talk about stuff, the, our power of that being seen goes way up, right? So relationship and, and communication on regarding posts matters. Um, so Brother Phil, I'm saying uh -huh. that on our church posts, if we see it, we should comment it. Yep, yep, comment, share. Uh, like isn't as powerful as it used to be. Okay. Um, commenting, and, commenting and sharing and, and, you know, that if you comment or share and then somebody else responds to you um, on that thread, very, very powerful. So, yeah, those are kind of things that we're going to be talking about as far as, like, the how. You know, we're still kind of hitting a little bit on the what, but, yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, what if, um, like... I share the video from Sunday and I share it on my site and people comment and stuff. Does that still connect to mm -hmm. the church even though it's being... Yeah, marked? it does. Because that piece of content, again, you know, this, this next point here, content type, um, that piece of content, that conversation is associated with it. And the original poster is is known and kind of reaps some of that benefit. Goes back to mm -hmm. that. Um, as I understand it, anyway, could change tomorrow. I but. think we just need to comment uh, on the church Facebook or yeah. If it um, works before it's over. I think if it's shared out, because that's a question I'm going to have to. I'll have to do some research on it. The exactly the how, um, and hopefully I'll have that by you know next week or the week after. Um, because that's that's going to be critical to this vision that we've got going forward. So, but yeah, definitely. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, the content type matters. Um, you know, a text post is not going to get anywhere near as much uh, posting power or reach or whatever as a photo, and and then video is king. Um, video is kind of a weird thing because right now we're just right now we're just putting our live streams out there, uh, and they're archived on Facebook and everything else. Um, the stuff that really weighs in is shorter form stuff because, you know, if someone, you know, we've got maybe say a hundred people over the course or 200 people over the course of, uh, you know, several months that will watch one of the services all the way through from start to finish, which is very, very powerful, you know, but not a lot of, you know, I think I, I get the sense from a lot of stuff that people are talking about with a lot of the short form stuff that they're doing nowadays, um, Facebook reels and, 
no, TikTok's another thing altogether. But um, I forgot what the YouTube short, ver oh, YouTube shorts, yeah. Um, those kind of things because people, a lot of times will scroll stuff and they won't watch the whole thing all the way through. Mm -hmm. So we gotta be able to capture them and then it, I think it's based on a percentage of you know how, how much of the video they watch, stuff like that. Um, so a short form video is gonna be you know, kind of a little bit more bang for the buck, I guess, maybe. Um, so we're, you know, we're working on some things there too, but, um, how, uh, how recent a post is, um, because since the posts, you know, since the, the feeds are no longer purely chronological, um, how, recent something is, is going to be more weighted than something that has resurfaced as somebody commented or liked something that was from three months ago or something, right? So the trick here, the, the, the less takeaway there is, you know, continue to post, post on a schedule, you know, make sure that you still have current stuff coming. And all of this, you know, is stuff that we're going to be working towards for the church, but, you know, it'll work for, you know, all of your Facebook feeds as well, right? It's kind of the, the beauty of the, of the algorithm is it works on a small scale and a big scale. Um, and popularity, the, the, how frequently your followers respond to the piece, to, to the stuff you put out. If you post once a day and you get, you know, 200 comments on everything, you know, that's going to be, that's going to get pushed out to a lot more people, the people that you don't even know and, and so forth. Um, and then there was an article about 2022 and changes that are already in place, right? Um, the, in, the, the what you see on your post, and this, this thing boggles my mind a little bit. Um, what you see on your feed depends on all of the posts available to you, okay? So if you're somebody like me with you know, not a ton of friends, you know, there may not be a lot of, and I, I think I, I, I think I'm maybe in like one group. Um, I don't probably have a, a big pool of posts to draw from, and I, I don't really sit there with, you know, scrolling through Facebook a lot anyway. But I might actually reach the end of stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody who's got, you know, the max, they're maxed out at five thousand friends. Which, really, who's got five thousand friends? Come on. <laughs> 5,000. Really? Yep. Yep. You can only have 5,000 You can friends. only have 5,000 friends, ever. <laughs> That's great. Okay. And you got 4,780. No, I'm just wondering because I see people that have, what, like, have, like, you know, 30,000 followers. Kind of thing that followers are different than friends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I'll have to research on exactly what that, what that means, but... Uh, at least the article that I read, I, I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not popular enough to get 5,000 friends. <laughs> so I'll never know from experience, but the article I read said 5,000. Um, and I think it said like 300 groups or something like that. Um, if you, you know, you got too much time on your hands. I'm just saying. Um, but somebody, you know, somebody who's, you know, in more groups and has more friends is gonna have a bigger pool, right? And they are more likely to have, to not see repeat posts and so forth. Um, the next part of this, uh, of the algorithm, that is the only thing that we can do anything about is what this article called signals, uh, which are cues that Facebook picks up from your post. Uh, how many people stopped to look at it for a second or to play the you know, the little video snippet or whatever, or to read it. Um, how many likes, uh, you know, how many people viewed it and commented and they are already a friend of yours or whatever, you know, do they have a relationship with you? Those are the only things that we can, even as a church, we can do really anything about. Um, and this is, I think this is really kind of, not something we, you know, the, the post inventory thing, we can't really do anything about that because that depends on the person that's viewing. You know, this is the part that we can, you know, try to 
analyze and figure out what will cause people to stop scrolling. Uh, what will cause people to, to uh, interact and, and answer questions or ask questions or whatever. Um, so that's going to be kind of where we go in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, and then predictions is where Facebook, based on what it knows about you and the content type that you, content stuff that you post, they're going to, if, uh, if, if somebody has a lot of reach and, and, you know, a lot of engagement on their posts and everything else, as soon as they post a, a, a new post, that person's post is probably going to be fed to a lot of people because it's kind of like Facebook is gambling on, well, I think we're a pretty safe bet that this one's going to get some engagement because everything else that they've done has gotten a lot of engagement. That's, that's what that is all about. And the last one is relevancy. You know, which ones are relevant to that person? You know, so like if, uh, you know, in my pool, if somebody posts about, uh, you know, 3D printing or vintage guitars or whatever, because those are things that I've expressed interest in in the past, they're relevant to me. And so, you know, I might see that post, even though somebody else with the same friends and same followers um, might not see that post because it doesn't matter. That type of thing doesn't matter to them necessarily. Um, so, you know, what do we do to, to kind of, you know, work the algorithm, right? How do we, how do we get around that? I gotta move fast. Um, talk to people. And I talked about likes not being, you know, the, the thing that it used to be, we, you know, we want to get people to, to, to love us, not, you know, love, oh, not likes. Right? They used to make fun of people who loved it. Well, it's not, it's not, I'm not talking about the actual clicking thing. I'm talking about, I'm talking about somebody who wants to follow, you know, what we put out, uh, what we say, uh, they want to, they want to talk to us about things that we say, you know, that's the, the love that I'm talking about there. Um, main thing is getting people talking back to us, responding to questions, asking questions and, and talking about the posts that we put out. Um, those are things that are gonna gonna matter. Facebook stories. I mean, like I said, this this stuff's moving faster than I can keep up with. But allegedly, I, you know, I mean, Facebook stories. Um, this all came from like a lot of marketing stuff for business, but I think a lot of it applies to church as well. So I need to, I need to learn about Facebook stories. You know, I need to learn about Reels, um, all this new stuff that you know is coming out. Okay. Okay. Similar to you to Snapchat, but they're really, really fast. Like if you have a lot of words on there, you have to really read. You know, like Alyssa, some Alyssa Fox yeah. will put words on there sometimes. You know, like have to pull it back. Yeah. Pull it okay. Back. Yeah, is that some of the ones that you were showing me about, like the year and pictures or whatever? Those ones that different people have done. No, that was a different. That was a different thing. Different okay. Thing. All right. So anyway, so yeah, I've got I've got a lot of learning to do, but um, so you know, we should figure out what that is and whether it is useful to us for sure. Um, the article said to, to make sure you go live, which we do. <laughs> so we're doing one thing. Woo! Um, and. It's important to be on when your audience is on, to be available to them or to post when they're there because of that whole currency thing, right? If something's five hours old, it's not gonna get the kind of reach as if it was 30 minutes old, right? Um, and so <coughs> this is 
based on America right now, um, American adults specifically, um, in as far as like which time of the day and which time of the week. Um, so it really looks like the morning hours are, you know, morning hours through the week, which I'm not sure what that says about how we work. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go to work and I'm going to spend four hours on Facebook and that then I'll do some stuff. That's your productive hours. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. a post in this time frame, so that's where, this is from a, a website that does, or a, a service that does postings on schedules. So you, you queue them up and it just goes out and like it has a bot that publishes things for, things for you. Um, so it's their business to know when, you know, to I'm taking them at their word. <laughs> I just, man, if all if all of America is doing, spending four hours on Facebook every every morning of the week, it's that's a bad thing. It's because they're all taking a nap from two to four. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe it's their lunch area. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Break the lunch area. <laughs> there you go. Um, but the you know the takeaway there is, you know, to get the best impact, know when people are on, and you can you can you know kind of tell from when your friends post when they're online, right? So you can do like a very small personal version of this. Um, but you know, if you want things to be seen, that's one thing that's gonna help. Um, yeah, because they're watching our live stream. Well, that's true. Oh, on Sunday from nine to 10? Well, Saturday Did you Sunday? say it was not near as active? active. Mm -hmm. I can go back. Yeah. You know, that it's it's pretty heavy on nine o'clock and ten o'clock though yeah. on Sunday morning. Yeah. That's but true. Of course that's before church starts. For us anyway. Yeah. I mean church starts at different times other places in the world. Yeah. I'm sure they're getting up having lunch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm sure these data probably change on a daily basis. Oh, sure. oh I'm sure. So this is yeah. just a snapshot. So <laughs> it's just funny from like Yeah. Yeah, that, that troubles me. It does. Yeah. <laughs> and these are these are people on Facebook. American adults. Was that Facebook? I think it was Facebook. It was. Yeah, Facebook. Oh, I'm sorry. Global. That that's global. Oh, well, that changes it. Well, yeah, because if this is American time, it's the other country. That no, no. This is this is local time. This is all local. Local. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good example of like you know we you know I, I put in a lot of words up, but then I put up a picture and we talk a lot about it. So so there you see see it works it works in real life too. Um, this is one thing that we're going to be doing. Um, I just want to make sure that we do it right. Um, doing a group for the church, um, and that group is going to be a place where you know. One, uh, one book that I've, I'm reading um, talks about your um, Facebook page that we have, right? It's kind of like your front porch, you know, and you, people can come drive by your front porch and they can see what you're about and this and that and everything else. But then what? You know, what, what do you call, what do you call, she, you know. Curb she, appeal. Curb appeal, exactly. But what do you call something that has great curb appeal but you look through the door and there's nothing inside. There, there's like not even, there's not even an inside. It, she calls it, in the book, she calls it a movie set. So it's like, that's what we've got right now because right now it's all. We've got curb appeal. We've got curb appeal, maybe. We need content. We need, con and we need oh, a you, place. You said still big word. Right? Content, content is game. Um, <laughs> but what we need is a living room, right? You wanna be able to invite people in and sit down and have a conversation with them. You know, sit down and share the gospel with them. So that's what this is, if we can if we can set it up in a way that works. So I'm, I'm researching right now to, to get that ironed out because that's gonna be a big key factor to what we're doing the rest of this year, hopefully. Um, long and short form videos, right now it's pretty much all long form. Um, 
still working on those ones with Brother Gene and staff members. Yep, doing the staff member stuff, and Brother Gene's, uh, you know, we've got several features.